Knowledge is power. Education is the heart of this power. And I feel passionately that it's the jobs of our educators and teachers to ensure that the power we instill in the younger generation is one that is fully equipped for a better future. Currently, we're in the midst of a pandemic, something that for, the, for a large majority of us have never experienced before. Our freedoms have been suppressed for the greater good. And we are limited in what we can do. We follow the advice and guidance of government. We adhere to the guidelines that are set for us. We put our blind faith almost in the decision makers, the SAGE team, their experts, Team Cobra, and the decisions of Boris Johnson. But I want you to ask yourself something. How did these people get to the position that they're in today? How are they the ones making the decisions? Democracy. We live in a democratic country. We are allowed to vote. We're allowed to have a say. We are allowed to pick who represents us. And yet the youth of today seem disenchanted with this fact. Disengaged. A common phrase that I hear thrown around time and time again is that young people just don't care about politics. Is that actually true? In 2015, a contrast of 43% of young people to 78% for the over 65s turned out in the 2015 election. That means that the older population has more of an influence. The political parties shape their politics to cater for that generation rather than focusing on the youths. The Scottish referendum shows us that young people can get engaged in a political process. They can be inspired, they can mobilise. So why isn't it happening across the UK? When doing research into this topic, it would appear that it isn't a worldwide issue. In striking contrast, let's take the Nordic countries, for example, when their turnout drops below 90%, entire investigations take place. Why are we in the UK then content with 60% at best? What's the difference? These countries invest in educating the youth in their political system that governs their country. Mock elections are incredibly popular and even compulsory in most schools. They have shown to educate and be very effective in creating interest in political matters amongst young people. Why do they not take place in the UK? Why are they laughed at? Why is it not compulsory that our curriculum covers British politics as a standalone subject? This to me seems ironic. A government runs the Department of Education. They have control over state schools and what is being taught. And yet somehow they deem their own subject to not be worthy of compulsory or necessary education. This is a sad fact that I personally believe needs to change. During the European elections in 2014, Matt Morley, a student from Exeter University, decided to, vote, to design a vote matching website named Tickbox. Within 24 hours, his website had 40,000 visitors. When interviewed, Morley stated, I realised to a lot of people, it's a lack of information that's driving this disengagement. His answer was to create a platform where voters can match their beliefs to a political candidate and a political party, connecting them with what actually matters to them. This identifies that we're selfish and potentially lazy when it comes to politics and the current political system, which seems appeal unappealing to some young people. But I ask the question, why do we need a fancy app or a website to help us match up with our ideal political candidate. It appears almost like a dating app. Surely we should have had the education and foundations within a school setting to know where to look first. It would appear not. After the UK narrowly voted to leave the EU, which sent stock markets tumbling, 
and social media panicking. Google Trends noted that the second most Googled phrase in the UK was what is the EU? This question suggests that the UK voted for something that they actually didn't understand. This is almost as dangerous in politics as vote, not voting at all. We have a population that would appear to not be educated in a political system and are comfortable in picking a side without even knowing the rules and regulations. To put this into context, this is comparable to me supporting a football team because I like the colour of their shirt or following a particular tennis player because I think he's attractive. One of the most annoying things about politics has to be the way that young people get spoken about as one giant homogenous group. As though you don't have individual feelings, concerns, opinions, hopes and dreams. On the 23rd of June 2016, the UK voted to leave the EU. We heard a lot in the media about how young people want to stay in the EU and that it's the older generation that's having an impact in dictating what's happening with no thought for the next generation. However, we need to look at the statistics. While 90% of over 65s turned out to vote, only 64% of 18 to 24 year olds did. As a democracy, we were given the voice to be able to say what we want for our future. And yet 36% of those people didn't bother turning up to have their say. Is this because our education system's failing to inform us about the basic understanding of politics and its importance within our day-to-day -day lives. Let's take Barack Obama as a case study. Everybody knows that one of the pillars of his 2008 victory was young people. People believed their vote mattered. People believed they were listened to. They would implement, that he would implement change. In 2018, he decided to try and engage young people again and to mobilise, he pointed out that certain states have more people go to Coachella than decide to vote for their presidential election. I would like to say that that fact doesn't resonate with a lot of you listening. However, I think potentially that is an interesting point that we would be more interested in going to a festival. In a Twitter video, he addresses the seven excuses that young people give for not voting. These include, I don't care about politics. My vote doesn't matter. Why do we think that? Why do we think that our vote doesn't matter? In the summer months in the UK, a reality TV programme takes place every evening on ITV. Attractive men and women sunbathe in a villa day in, day out. And we sit watching religiously, voting on our phones for which couple should stay, which couple should go. Wanting to have an input, wanting our voice to have a, to matter, to ultimately make the decision. Devastated if we miss just one episode. And yet when it comes to politics and voting, whether it be a general or a European election, we think our vote doesn't matter. Why? I believe this all links back to the lack of understanding and education that schools provide for their young people. When it comes to education and politics, if the schools don't deem it to be important as English, maths, science, then why would our young people think that? The BBC has stated that school leavers could be the worst hit by the economic impact of the coronavirus. Youth unemployment in the UK could rise to 640,000 this year. Apprenticeship schemes could soon dry up. This crisis will affect the job market, the housing market, universities and so much more. Is it not our responsibility as educators to ensure that we give them the knowledge to understand the political outcome and the basics of politics? If we lay the foundations and actively educate within our schools, then we have given our young people a fighting chance of making a decision 
based on education rather than at guess at best. As I said at the very beginning, knowledge is power. I believe that we are failing the youth of today by not prioritising politics as a fundamental subject that is taught in secondary schools across the UK. To ensure that our future has a better understanding of how they can affect and implement change. Knowledge is power.